skating teaches you how to fall. When your best friends all strong up, you do everything you can, cause you never got let it get you find it all around. Yeah, you say it's what you need and hide your eyes when you're close to the feeling in the clouds. Well, you wanna know that you know man where you are. And the head upside down. Well, it comes ways with time. My name is Randy Davila. I'm 27 and I'm a lecturer in the mathematics department at Texas State. The feeling I get when I skate is kind of more of like accomplishment. So when I finally do the trick that I was trying, there's this sense of euphoria, like, okay, I actually focused enough to do this. And I was able to overcome whatever it is that I, was wrong with me, I guess. I think the first time that I picked up a skateboard, I was probably like nine or something. But the first time I actually started to skate was in seventh grade. And it was like a nonstop thing after that. I dropped out of high school when I was 17. And the main reason I did that was that I was behind. I was old enough to be a junior, but I was still in Algebra 1. And I could never get past it because I just didn't care. And it just was boring to me. I, did just, I was so focused on skating that I just completely bypassed everything that high school was. I, I, I can honestly say I didn't learn anything in high school. Skating taught me the value of failure. Like falling, like, falling down a bunch of times and getting back up and trying and trying and trying and trying and trying until you do it is something that skating does to you. And that's kind of how I ended up getting my bachelor's degree in mathematics, going to Rice oh. to get my graduate degree, and now teaching at Texas State. It was just this idea of don't give up. Just keep on trying and trying and trying. Even if you fail a few times, just keep on trying and you'll be able to do it. It's just certain places around campus where it's like you would like to have Wi-Fi, but it just, you can't connect to it, so it's just. I don't feel like it's capable of meeting the needs of the students. I mean, it's kind of slow. Students and faculty rely heavily on the internet. It's essential for classroom instruction and everyday communication. It's honestly like 80-20 with the Wi-Fi, like I need it like 80% of my, 80% of the time. Mark Hughes of the University's Technology Resources Division says he understands the network's importance and a campus-wide upgrade is necessary to meet the latest wireless standards. This is really a natural progression uh, where we were B and G, we then moved to N, and now we're moving up to the latest uh, release, which is AC uh, Wave 2, which is really the fastest uh, AP uh, that's out on the market today. Oh, okay, so it's going to get better. What this means is a network will be able to handle a higher volume of traffic at once but the Wi-Fi speed will only be as fast as devices allow. The funds for this multi-million dollar project will be coming from student fees. How much though? Oh sweet, <laughs> more fees. I mean it's fair to increase the fee. As long as it's not like an outrageous amount, I'm not really tripping. Hughes says the team at iTech works hard to make sure the Wi-Fi network contributes to student success at the university. He strongly encourages anyone who experiences problems to call ITAC for help. So I think you'll see a lot of improvement, but particularly um, places that aren't covered today, the strategy is to have all those covered so literally anywhere I go, even in a teaching theater, I have full access uh, to Wi-Fi. The project is set to be finished over the winter break. Hughes says students can expect little or no impact during the transition. The goal is to make Wi-Fi ubiquitous across campus which means you can get Wi-Fi in the classrooms, in our beautiful green spaces, and even on your way to class with no interference. For Bobcat Update, I'm Isaac Garza. Well, hello. Downtown San Marcos was a fun place to be over the Halloween weekend. 
uh, just a really yes. wonderful and safe way for the little ones to do their trick-or-treating downtown and hopefully for the parents to experience uh, downtown and maybe inter introduce themselves to some shops they didn't know we had down here. And it's safe to say that the shop owners love the event just as much as the kids do. Oh, I think it's fantastic. Well, there's wonderful uh, costumes and excitement and energy. It gives the people an opportunity to know who we are. The downtown trick-or-treating gives small shops an opportunity to promote themselves with coupons, candy, and even toothbrushes. Well, they're going to get tons of candy and they always need a toothbrush and uh, try to foster some creativity with a pencil and a notepad. The Main Street office is planning more events to come for the rest of the year. You can check out their calendar on their website for more dates. For Bobcat Update, I'm Kelsey Favila.